What's going on guys? I'm glad to be back. I hope you're all doing well. Um, today I wanted to make a, you know, 10, 15 minute video on some knives here that I've got laying out. And just to give you an idea of, um, you know, what you might want to look for in a knife if you choose to buy one. Um, do keep in mind, check your local state laws, local laws, um, regarding some of these knives um, so here we go we'll just get into it this is not going to be anything super in depth we're just going to um, go over some of the different styles some of the different steels and what might work for you we have three different knives here we have the calamus knife from calamus knife company we have a kershaw that's a rexford design here and we have a kershaw knife here. Um, these two have just been sharpened. This one is brand new. Um, and the reason I wanted to make this video is to just kind of help educate you on what you might want to look for in a knife that you want to carry every day. Um, so let's get into it. The three styles here we have are strictly a flipper knife, a flipper with assisted opening, and a full auto knife. What's the difference, you ask? A flipper knife just has this little finger finger uh, nipple right there, and it's simply opened by pushing on it. And generally, they'll have their riding on ball bearings, and that is how it is opened. It's opened by the force of your finger, and that's it. There's no assisted action, there's no springs or anything. It's simply just opening with the pressure of your finger. Um, this knife was $20. It's an Os 8 blade. It's a reason, it's a good blade steel for a cheap knife. Um, it will cut tape in that and whatever you need to during your everyday uses. It will lose its edge very quickly. It's not going to stay sharp long. Um, it will require frequent sharpening under um, normal heavy use but it will take an edge very easily and it does get very sharp um, with the proper sharpening. I sharpen my knives between 18 and 22 degrees, um, usually right in the middle about 20 and uh, that's about where I'm at. Um, this is a liner lock and this means that when the blade flips open there's two metal liners in there and one of them folds over and locks the blade into place. Um, again, this is a Calibus knife. It's a titanium coated something. It was a $20 knife. I bought it at Walmart just because I like knives. Nothing wrong with it. Um, it's a good knife and it does ride on ball bearings. And as you can see, the blade sits very centered. Um, it's fairly light and it's got G10 scales on the side and uh, for $20, you can't really beat it. So we'll set that one over right there. The next we have a Kershaw. This was my everyday carry for, God, eight months. Um, this is a flipper knife as well, um, but it is, is an assisted opening flipper, meaning that once you push this out, it's a lot snappier in opening and it uses the torsion bar method to help assist that blade in opening. So if you were to fold this out, you got that little bit of pressure right there. Um, but it's still a manual opening knife. It just uses a little bit of torsion to help it open. Um, this is a Rexford design. As you can see, this is a frame lock. Um, and the difference between a frame lock and a liner lock is just in what is actually locking the blade. The liner lock has the liner in there that locks the blade and the frame lock actually, the whole frame is cut out and folds under. My preference is a flipping knife that is a frame lock. Um, I do, th do like the frame lock more so than the liner lock. Um, but whatever preference is yours, they're both 
durable for what you're going to use a pocket knife for. Um, the blade steel on this is the um, 8CR13 MOV. It's very similar to the OS 8. Um, one is a, a Japanese steel, one is a Chinese steel. Um, this one does have a little bit more molly bedlam in it. Um, they're both very similar. Both of them will do just fine in day to day um, carry and um, they both will take a very sharp edge but they will both require sharpening. Um, $20, $40. Um, and then we have the Kershaw uh, Launch 3. This is a made in the USA knife and this is a full auto knife and to operate this knife you simply press the button and it snaps open under spring tension throughout the whole travel. There's no assisted torsion or anything, it's actually spring loaded. Um, this is again made in the USA, it's very light. Um, these are titanium scales and it's milled very nice, excuse me, not titanium, aluminum scales and it's it's milled very nice to keep it nice and light. It's it's durable enough for what you're going to use for an everyday carry pocket knife. The blade steel is CPM 154. It is a powdered metallurgy. It is um, finer grain metal, meaning that it um, takes a very nice edge, and it will hold that edge a lot longer than either one of these two. Um, this knife will cost you about a hundred dollars and it is again the Kershaw Launch 3. They make a Launch 1 through Launch like 10 now. Um, whatever preference you like, you can get. Um, this knife, again, about a hundred dollars, 107 after tax and worth any penny. You will not find a better automatic knife for a hundred dollars than you will this Kershaw. You will not, or any of the Launch series. They are an excellent knife, and they are worth every penny that you would pay for them. Um, check your laws with this one. Some states do not allow automatic knives, aka switch blades. It's absolutely no different from this, but whatever. I digress on that. Um, these have all just been, this is brand new. These two have just been sharpened, but I'll show you the difference with this piece of paper just to give you an idea of, of the difference in sharpening. Um, OS 8. You've got to pull it back and it will cut. you got to apply a little bit of force to it. Even though it's sharp, it's good for everyday use, but you do have to you can see where it tears a little bit or wants to pull a little bit. The 813CR MOV blade. Let's pull it, flip it over. As you can see, it cuts as well. Um, it does fold the paper though. And the Kershaw. You can just take it and, as you can see, I don't have to move out. The blade will just slice the paper like butter. Very sharp knife. Um, if you're looking for an everyday carry knife that um, you want to retain an edge and um, you want it to give you a good life and to last, and depending on what you're doing with it and depending on your laws, um, I would personally opt for the Kershaw Launch 3 over any of them. Um, quick deployment with one hand, um, good locking mechanism, good blade, uh, I lost my train of thought, um, good knurling on the top of the blade there if you're doing slicing or whatever you're doing to keep your thumb situated on the blade. You got that nice lip there to keep your fingers um, from riding up on the blade and this blade steel will stay sharper a lot longer it will take a sharper edge and uh, I think you'll be very happy with it um, 
And if you're not allowed to have a automatic blade in your state, um, then perhaps maybe um, just get the 150 CPM 154 blade um, and, and a knife that, that you're allowed to have in your state. Um, so that, that's my little rant. I just wanted to make a quick video to show you the difference in, in money and, and what you'll get. Um, there's no real rhyme or reason. Whatever you like, you get. There's no wrong or right. It's my preference and I prefer a flipper and a frame lock for anything that isn't a switchblade. But just wanted to give you a, a kind of an idea of where your money should be depending on what you want to do. 20, 40, 100. Um, perfectly fine for everyday use. You just have to sharpen them more. Great starting knife if you don't know how to sharpen. If you want to sharpen a lot less and have even a sharper blade, um, definitely use the CPM uh, 154 blade. Um, if you have any questions, put them in the comments below, guys. And we will see you soon. Um, hopefully with a range video if it ever stops raining where I'm at. So uh, we'll see you soon, guys. Please like, subscribe, comment, question, share. Um, let's grow this channel. And uh, put some ideas in the comments below about what you'd like to see. And uh, we'll see if we can't make it happen. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you soon.